Your goal is to be the largest online, and you are, retailer in the world. Beyond that, what's the goal? Well, our mission is Earth's most customer-centric company. But and I don't we, know what that means. Well, let me, I'll give you an example. Um, right after World War II, Morita-san, the guy who founded Sony, s set as the mission for Sony that they were going to make Japan known for quality. You have to remember, this was a time when Japan was known for uh, cheap copycat products. And Morita-san said, he didn't say we're going to make Sony known mm. for quality. He said we're going to make Japan known for quality. He, he chose a mission for Sony that was bigger than Sony. And when we talk about Earth's most customer-centric company, we have a similar idea in mind. We want other companies to look at Amazon and see us as a standard bearer for obsessive focus on the customer as opposed to obsessive focus on the competitor. So that's one of the reasons we work on differentiated products. It's one of the reasons we take a long-term viewpoint on things. You can't really do the right thing for customers if you're short-term oriented. And if you're going to invent new things, you've also got to be able, and this goes along with long-term mm -hmm. orientation, you've got to be willing to endure a lot of criticism. You know, if you're going to put, Kindle is a good example. If you're going to put your back into reinventing a 500-year-old industry, some folks are going to get ornery. <laughs> <laughs> it was also feared at one time, those people who had, had your stock, that once Walmart, for example, got serious about being online, they were going to blow you away. Why didn't that happen? Well, I think it's because we did a good job for our customers. So, you know, we have, you go back in time and we've been called Amazon.toast. Right, I remember. Amazon.con, Amazon.bomb. You know, this is all like <laughs> in the first three years of our existence. Sure, yeah. And it, it, that's part of what I'm talking about, the willingness to be misunderstood. If you're going to do things, we lay out what we're doing and we tell people, you know, how we think about things. Like I'm saying to people, you know, the, the, the iPad is not a Kindle killer. I'm very clear about that, but it doesn't keep people from writing that. And I'm very clear about why. It's a totally differentiated device. It's $139. Works in bright sunlight. You can read with one hand. It's so light and the battery lasts a month. For $139, why wouldn't you want a device like that? Okay, but let me go back to the Walmart issue, though. Yeah. Is it, what was it that made you uh, able to sustain a challenge from a, the world's greatest retailer? Obsessive customer focus on... But, well, but how do you focus on the customer better I'll than they you. focus on the customer? Uh, well, we, I mean, they're pretty all, good at focusing on the customer, too. But we're very differentiated in how we do it. And so our approach, when you, if, you, if you think about our retail business, which I think is what you're asking about here, there are really three things that we know are well, critical. Well, that's the heart and soul been, of your business, isn't Well, it? and especially relative to the Walmart question, yeah. I think that's the key. It's selection, low prices, and fast, convenient, reliable delivery, so that the shipment side. And so we okay, have... Okay, wait, wait. So Walmart doesn't have low prices, fast, and convenient delivery? I would claim that Amazon has much broader selection, in many cases, if I, I, I don't want to be overly bold in my claim, but the online model gives us significant cost structure advantages that lets us have even lower prices than physical stores. Selling online. E well, sometimes they, have, um, they do have a umbrella problems sometimes where they, they, they don't want to compete against themselves online mm -hmm. versus offline. But a Walmart, with all of the volume that it buys, it's purchasing power therefore gives it the ability to offer lower prices. Well, Doesn't that I, give them an advantage they ought to be able to translate? Because their purchasing power is bigger than your purchasing power, is it not? I, wouldn't, I, I think in a lot of the product categories, uh, that ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning what? Meaning that we have... The purchasing power we, we, to compete with anybody. We have the volume relationships right. with suppliers, that playing field has been leveled. Okay. If you'd asked me that question, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, right. I'd have agreed with you that... In, that there was a challenge you had overcome. But even then, we don't... Our profitability is not our customer's problem. We don't take the point of view 
that we're going to price products, you know, at a particular margin for ourselves. We say we're going to price products competitively. And if that means on that product that we lose money, that's okay because we need to take care of the customer and earn trust. And we'll figure out over time. And if we, can, if we find we can't ever make money with that product, we'll stop selling it. But we don't want to, we're not going to make customers pay for any of our inefficiencies, if you see what Did I'm saying. Did you lose money on the Kindle? Every new business that we have ever invested in we have, it's, it has taken years. Most businesses have either no impact on our financials for the first five to seven years or a negative impact on our financials for the first five to seven years. And we do a lot of new things. The company is, is very healthy financially. Um, we're, 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 we're doing very well. And it's, it's an outcome of customer obsession. So, you know, when, when we were Amazon.toast, that was because Barnes & Noble had you know this is we only had a hundred and right. when we were declared Amazon.toast I think we had a hundred and fifty employees Barnes and Noble had thirty thousand employees and somebody wrote an article that said you know Amazon has had a great two-year run but now the big boys have shown up and they're gonna steamroll them and you know we had a all hands meeting I called all hundred and fifty employees together and I said look because everybody's worried about they just, every employee has read the Amazon.toast article Every mother of every employee has read the Amazon.toast article and <laughs> has father, called and said, Your father and mother who live here you, in New York. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. And so we had an all-hands meeting, and I said, look, um, you should wake up worried, terrified every morning, but don't be worried about our competitors because they're never going to send us any money anyway. Let's be worried about our customers and stay heads down focused. And so I, you know, there, these are big, most of these are big markets. Another way to answer your, your question about com competitors and Walmart is to say, look, they can succeed fabulously and it won't stop us from succeeding. These retail markets are huge. So we can, we, it, it often doesn't make sense for us to think of it as a pitched mm -hmm. battle. You know, sometimes um, people think about business as a, it's kind of like a, uh, a sporting event. There's a winner and a loser. It's not a zero-sum game. It usually isn't. Uh, I, I'm sure there are cases where, it, but most often, industries mm -hmm. succeed. So I can tell you, I think e-commerce is succeeding. And the way we think about it, nobody else has to fail for us to do well. I think e-books is like that. I think there are going to be many winners. I think e-books is going to be a huge industry. Well, there are many competitors now. I mean, you've got Barnes and & Noble is one of them, Sony is another be, now, and Apple be more. is another. But I have a list of 50 competitors that we could walk through, I mean, you know, all yeah. over the world doing different things. And our focus is going to be, you know what, we'll try to pay attention to those competitors, but we're not going to obsess yeah. over them. We're going to obsess over readers. And that, because those are the people who are buying that device. And we're going to make it. And it's not just a business for us. It's a mission for us. And missionaries build better products. What is Jeff Bezos thinking about today in 2010 that we might not know anything about that he thinks may be a reality in 2013 or 2015? Well, where is the. One of the things is our. the Amazon Web Services business. Now, there's a business that probably this is, this is not... This is the Amazon Cloud stuff? Yes. And there, there's a business that's growing. You know, it's in a hyper-growth phase. It's already a significant business. That's a business that probably is not getting as much attention now, as Is there a dominant player deserves. in the cloud business now? Well, Amazon, in the infrastructure part of it, which is the part that we play in, Amazon is by far the leader. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, it started mostly with startup companies, but now it's big enterprises adopting. The best analogy I can give you for this is it's like the electric grid. So instead of, you know, right now, big companies build their own data centers and they buy their own servers and they put it in. It's a lot of capex. There's a lot of price of admission. You have to, if you're going to operate a data center, you have to do it well. Um, but it doesn't differentiate you from your competitors. It doesn't. It's just a price of admission. And so what we do at Amazon Web Services is we sell compute by the hour. We sell compute by the drink. Right. And it's just like buying electricity off the grid instead of having your own power manufacturing, your own power generating plant.